Uh, let's talk pensions, shall we? Uh, pensioners apparently will lose a chunk of their state pension boost next year because of what some people are calling a stealth tax. You'll all be familiar by now with a triple lock. It basically says that the pensions have to increase each year by one of the things. It all gets a bit complicated, but it's basically either inflation, wage growth or 2.5%. One of the issues or one of the challenges that, that people are now saying is that when you look at the wage figure and you have wages plus bonuses, and it's this uh, that people are now arguing. So I think what uh, the suggestion is that the Tories are going to, instead of raising it by wages plus bonuses, mm. they want to strip it back and just do wages. Yeah. Where do you stand on it, Aaron? Yes, yeah, really interesting because I think wages, maybe you can correct me, this came out yesterday, right? Wages went up 7.4%, but of course we've had so many of these settlements recently because of industrial disputes and whatnot, as well as the bonuses. So quite a one-off thing, really, uh, as a result of industrial action over the last two quarters. Well, <coughs> but wages, including bonuses, yeah. this is the issue, that yeah. is 8.5%. Yeah. yeah, which is, is uh, you know, it's, uh, it's significantly higher than inflation for the first time in, in a long time. But... I would get rid of the triple lock. Personally, I think it's daft. Oh, I can hear you all at home. Yeah. I can hear you absolutely screaming but, at him. But hold on, oh. hold on. I would index it to inflation. Um, and I think there's a pretty, if you're a progressive, there's an argument to say index it to inflation plus 1% or something like that if you want to reduce pension poverty. What I don't get is this kind of arcane system of inflation or wages or 2.5%. And that third part, the 2.5%, is crucial because what it really crystallises is that this policy presumed that we would have low inflation and low wages like we did in 2010 all the time. And which is when it was don't. introduced. Yeah. The triple lot was introduced in 2010. Which, which we don't. And I think when it was introduced in 2010, 2011, it was calculated to cost £450 million. <clears throat> now this increase is estimated to cost £10.2 billion. We need to do something about pension of poverty. I think that, I'm sure we all agree on that. I think most people watching and listening agree on that. The question is, is the triple lock the best way of doing that? So I think simplify it uh, and I think just index it to inflation. What do you reckon to that? Is that fair or not, Quentin? It's a very tricky question, this, because I personally believe in I want to have lower taxes generally, I want to have lower government spending, but <clears throat> I have a, an old ma of 88, and I know that uh, people, when they get older, need to spend more on heating. Mm. Uh, they have more calls on, you know, they, they, they need a bit more money in, in order to survive in a comfortable way. So it's a really tricky one, this. We haven't yet heard what, for sure, the two parties are going, the two main parties are going to do on this in the next general election. Well, let's, uh, but let's yeah, be honest. They're, they're they're being a little bit uh, unclear about it at the moment. But can we afford, as a nation, the current uh, pensions bill? Well, I think we can just about at the moment. But as the population, as the demographic uh, bulge comes up, then it's going to become increasingly uh, difficult. And so I find myself a little bit torn about this. I think at the moment it's um, politically electoral suicide mm. to fiddle about with this. And but, that, that so that means the, it probably won't happen. And that is the key point, isn't it? Because it's all well and good talking about tinkering this and all the rest of it, but really, I don't think any party literally in the run-up to an election, has the uh, chops to sit there and say, right, we're going to change this and potentially therefore reduce it because the turnout of the older demographic is huge compared to the turnout of the younger demographic. I just want to um, just move on slightly but related because when it comes to pensions, there's lots of conversations about pensioners being pulled into tax brackets. I'll just bring up the tax brackets uh, for those of you that might not be familiar with them. You can see you get 12,570 quid uh, at zero rate and then you go up to 20% uh, when you go over that threshold, but up to 50%. That is in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, over in Scotland, it does uh, alter quite a little bit. You've got a couple of extra bands there, give or take 1%. Uh, but still, that 1257 uh, is tax-free. Some people are saying that your state pension should be basically exempt from counting towards your taxable income. So if all you get is your state pension and you're under the threshold, you know, it's <clears> irrelevant. But if you get your state pension, then a little small work-based uh, pension or whatever, you're going to start getting taxed on stuff. Do you think uh, state pensions should be excluded from counting towards your income? I think there's a strong argument for it. Um, I think if somebody's relying on the state pension, plus, like you say, a small private pension, or they do some, you know, they work two days a week at Waitrose or something, I think there's a strong argument for it. I'm very, even as a socialist, Michelle, well. uh, I'm very reticent right now to increase any taxes really 
on people in, in low incomes or, or pensioners. I think if we're going to increase taxes anywhere, it needs to be on something like capital gains. Um, it might need to be on a land value tax, maybe a small financial transactions tax. Now, I know these are all very controversial. I appreciate that. But I, I think if we're putting those anywhere in the economy... Wealth I, tax. You always come after the so-called wealth tax. Well, idea. well, you know, I, what, I, what I would say is... I, I know I, when people say wealth tax, I don't want to go off on tangents because I debate this all the time, yeah. but it's something like the top one, top 10% pay something like 60% of the tax yeah. take. And I'm like, how much more do you want people to pay? But anyway, I am going on a bit of a tangent. So, no, so I'll, I'll clarify what I mean. You know, um, rates of income tax, generally speaking, are lower than rates of capital gains tax. So if somebody has a, a third house and they sell it, the tax they're paying on the revenues that's generated for them as a person yeah. is significantly lower than if somebody earned that money working for it. But then I, let's, I, let's I not that, forget that I the money that they've right. got, yeah, but the money that they've used to buy said asset that's apparently appreciated in value will have been taxable income. I appreciate in the that, but if, I think if, if, if your work is being taxed at a high level, I think that's wrong. Well, we always have this argument, don't we? You can touch and tell me what you think. But anyway, Quentin, on this issue of the state pension being essentially yep. excluded from counting towards your taxable income, yay or no? Yeah, you can't do that. It's income is income. Uh, I sound like a, some ghastly accountant, <laughs> but um, I'm afraid that is. I hate tax. I can't tell the viewers how much I hate tax. But uh, um, income has to count as income wherever it comes from. And uh, the important thing with tax, so if you're going to have tax uh, exemptions when it comes to pensions, that has to be at the point at which people are putting in money. So therefore, you're encouraging people to save, youngsters to save mm -hmm. for the future. That, I can see, is where tax exemptions uh, will work for pensions. Uh, Vernon, Michelle... Why can't any of you lot tell the truth, he asks. He says it's not the fact that the state pension uh, increases uh, is expensive, but it's more the fact that basically everyone and anyone gets that increase. He's saying including millionaire pensioners. What you're asking then, uh, Vernon, is means-tested pensions. Would you support that? Well, there aren't that many millionaire pensioners. Um, uh, and uh, I, just, I don't think they are a significant enough uh, group for it to be relevant here. John makes an interesting point. He says, why is this government uh, intent on chipping away uh, the people that don't have very much, the things like state pensions, when on the other hand, they're confettiing money around, millions of pounds per day, on housing people in hotels and all the rest of it that some would argue shouldn't even be here in the first place. Uh, you took the words out of the mouth of a lot of my... Yeah, but the thing is, they're not chiselling away at it. I mean, the, 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 it's likely, the indications at the moment are, the government is going to stay with this. But there's quite a, you know, an interesting conversation in, in Westminster at the moment saying perhaps we, you know, all parties saying perhaps ooh, maybe things are getting too expensive.